Hello, and welcome to The Scientific Way of Thinking with Vera. I am Dr. Spencer Rugaber of the School of Computer Science at Georgia Tech and one of the developers of the Vera software tool. And hi, I'm Dr. Emily Weigel. I'm in the, the College of Sciences in the School of Biological Sciences, and I've used Vera in my classes. In this short video course, you will learn how to think like a scientist. There are many advantages of learning to think like a scientist. The use of scientific thinking helps us to make sense of the world around us. When we encounter a problem, how to work through it can be a scientific process. Scientific thinking includes many skills, including observing, asking questions, making predictions, testing ideas, documenting data, and communicating thoughts. We all use scientific thinking in our everyday life, including looking out the window to see what the weather is doing so we know what to wear, experimenting with the ingredients when we're making a cake, or trying to figure out why our tomatoes are withering on the vine in this hot summer. So how does scientific thinking work? How do scientists solve problems? What do they do when they fail? This course will help you answer these questions. Well, let's start off with a problem. Spencer, have you ever heard of kudzu? Boy, have I ever heard of kudzu. It's been in my yard in Atlanta. I'm sure our students would love to hear more, Emily. Okay. Well, if you haven't seen kudzu before, there's a picture right in front of you. It's that kind of vine-looking green plant that's creeping its way up the trees that you see there. It was first introduced in Asia in the late 19th century as a garden novelty. Unfortunately, it began to infest most of the southeast. Once that happened, we termed it an invasive species. After that point, Georgia was essentially infested with this fast-growing and environmentally damaging plant. Wow. How do we attack it? Well, one way is scientifically. What this means is we can collect some data and from it develop some hypotheses. What that means is, is generating an idea from which we can set predictions about an outcome of some intervention. If a prediction is not satisfied, then we can adjust and make some new hypotheses and retest. So we're going to have a look at the kudzu problem and its impact on the American hornbeam, a hardwood tree that also grows in the southeast of the United States. You can see the tree on the screen here. We will use the impact of kudzu on the American hornbeam to illustrate a scientific way of thinking. 